Darwin's theory of evolution changed everything. His assertion that humans evolved from ancient ancestors in Africa challenged traditional religious beliefs and motivated scientists of many disciplines to begin exploring the theory. It's one thing to claim that humans evolved from African apes. It would be another thing to prove it. In 1974, anthropologist Donald Johansson and his team were working in Ethiopia when they came upon the partial remains of an ancient hominid, a species considered to be part of the family that includes humankind. Because the skeleton had once stood about three feet tall, Johansson believed it was that of a young female. He named her Lucy, after the Beatles song, Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Despite her fragmented remains, Lucy had remarkable secrets to share about her life. Oh, wow. Does this fit? No. At the time of her discovery, the most complete hominid skeleton ever found was less than 100,000 years old. Lucy was an estimated 3.2 million years old. Bill. Dr. Ken Mowbray is an anthropologist with the American Museum of Natural History. Yeah, Lucy really shook up the family tree, so to speak. Well, why was she such a big deal? She was a big deal for many reasons. Uh, first of all, her skeleton was 40% complete. 40%, that's yeah. complete to you guys? You know, in, in fossil terms, yeah. that's a lot of uh, fossil uh -huh. bones for an individual. Something even more important that makes her really significant is that uh, we believe that she was bipedal. I have a cast here of the pelvis of Lucy, the left side. The pelvis sits right like this in the human body. Mm -hmm. It is short and it is broad. If you were to look at a chimpanzee, a gorilla, or an orangutan, their blades are really narrow and really tall. The blade of Lucy, and like ours, extends outwardly. This allows the transference of weight if you were going to walk on two limbs. And so from this pelvis alone, we think that uh, Lucy moved about the landscape as an habitual biped. Like you and me. Exactly. Like she was walking around essentially like us. Lucy's discovery sparked a debate about whether she could be the long sought after missing link connecting apes with the first humans. But some anthropologists, like Dr. Mowbray, believe that the missing link is a myth. Now, for a long time, people thought there was a link between chimpanzees and humans. And when I look at chimpanzees and humans, I can see where you'd get that idea. But it's not that simple, right? Absolutely. Lucy really opened up the world in the, in the late 1970s to, to have a better understanding that there wasn't this linear progression of evolution, especially with, with humans, that it was much more diversified. With Lucy and subsequent fossil finds, we really know that this tree of life is much more like a bush. There's a lot of experimentation going on, a lot of dead ends. Regardless of whose ancient footsteps we may be walking in, there's one remarkable set of footprints without dispute. In 1978, anthropologist Mary Leakey and her team were working in Laetoli, Tanzania, when they made one of the greatest discoveries in the study of human origins. A pair of fossilized footprints, old enough and small enough to have been made by two hominids, much like Lucy. The significance is that, one, that they're dated at 3.6 million years ago. Those are the oldest human ancestor footprints that we have, that we know of today. More importantly, I think, it records behavior. Their footprints let us know that they were walking bipedally. There were no fingerprints, there were no knuckle marks around the, the imprints of their feet. And on top of that, we know that they were in groups. They were social. They weren't just walking by themselves. The remarkable discovery of the Latoli footprints was made possible by a series of natural events that occurred 3.7 million years ago. Of 
volcano erupted, covering the landscape with a thin layer of ash. As rain fell, the ash became thick, like wet cement, and soon was covered by animal tracks, birds, a rabbit, and then the footprints of two hominids. Eventually, another volcanic eruption blanketed the spot with more ash, a protective layer that preserved the prints as they hardened. They remained hidden until Mary Leakey revealed them to the world. The 20th century will be remembered as the golden age of human fossil discoveries. But so far, the greatest discovery of the 21st century occurred in Central Africa in 2002. A research team led by Michel Brunet unearthed six skull fragments of an ancient hominid they nicknamed Tumai, meaning hope of life. The skull revealed features never seen before, an ape-like cranium, but with teeth far more human-like. So far, at seven million years old, Tumai is the oldest hominid fossil ever found, more than twice as old as Lucy, raising significant new questions about the diversity of life among ancient hominids. So what's the significance of the skull from Chad, Tumai? And it's telling us a couple different things. One, it's telling us there's a lot of diversity in the human fossil record. There's a lot of branches on this so-called tree that end up as just evolutionary experiments at best. We luckily ended up on this little twig of a really diverse family tree. The last significance of the Tumai skull is that it's telling us to step back, wave a huge yellow caution flag, and reevaluate the fossils that we already have in the human family tree and reassess what it means to be a hominid. What does it mean to you to be a hominid? Well, I, I look at being a hominid in two different ways. Hominids lack the ability to remain bored. And there was a group of primates out there that had no ability to just sit there and do nothing. And this, coupled with upright habitual bipedalism, this is what a hominid is to me. Bipedal and unable to remain bored. Yeah. I'm a hominid, doggone it. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We're hominids. It's a fact of life on Earth. Extinction happens. Eventually, every species goes the way of the ancient dinosaurs. So why are we still here? Well, we're smarter than the competition. We're very well suited to the Earth's environment right now. We've had our share of dumb luck. So far, our species hasn't had to face the catastrophe of a speeding asteroid. Life, like roulette, is a game of chance. But thanks to the greatest discoveries that we've just explored, the odds for our survival may have improved because the more we understand about the origin and nature of life, the more we may be able to keep our streak alive. <laughs>